friends welcome to my channel neurology videos learn by seeing now onwards we will learn how to take the history examination how to reach the differential diagnosis on the basis of various neurological complaints and finally after investigations how to come to a final diagnosis okay this case is a case of 34 year old female she is right handed so in every history you should mark whether she is left whether the person is left handed or right handed what then we will write the com chief complaints in this case the patient had headache for the two months which has increased for 20 days and decreased vision in the both eyes which was more on the right than the left for the last 15 days these were the chief complaints okay then in history of present illness how will you take the history of headache headache in this patient was initially hemicranial temporal throbbing associated with nausea vomiting but for the past 20 days the headache the character had changed from hemicranial to holocranial now two important things she had early morning worsening with transient episodes of blurred vision especially on getting up from sleep and would and increase on bending forward so what is the implication of this history this history is very important because a patient having hemicranial headache with nausea vomiting throbbing you can say this is a migraineous headache this is a vascular headache but in this history we have that the character has changed now there is worsening that patient has early morning worsening and history of transient obscuration of vision tov that what are tovs these patients complain of blurred vision on getting up from sleep and bending forward which tells about that there is increased intracranial pressure then comes a history of decreased vision now how will you take the history of decreased vision you will say whether it is present in one eye or both eyes in this patient there was decreased vision in both eyes which was progressive over 20 days there was what is important negative history there was no periorbital pain or pain on eye movements so what we have ruled out optic neuritis then color desaturation was present okay there is no history of floaters, micropsia, macropsia, metamorphosia and photophobia. Okay. Now, in this patient, in past history, patient had acne and she was on tretinoin. Examination. Important thing was BMI was raised. It was 34. Now, coming to the CNS examination, high mental function, speech, cranial nerves. Even in cranial nerves, what is the important cranial nerve which we should learn? That is second, third, fourth and sixth. In the second cranial nerve, the visual acuity was decreased. Right eye it was 6 by 18, left eye 6 by 6. Intraocular pressure was normal. Pupillary reflex was normal. In extraocular movements, we had the lateral rectus left side left lateral rectus involvement was there no other cranial nerves was uh, present no other cranial nerve abnormality was present motor sensory and cerebellar examination was normal fields of this patient there was you can see there was peripheral constriction of the visual fields so of this uh, of this patient showed frank disc edema both eyes with the obscuration of the vessels as they were leaving the disc in this patient who now summarizing this patient this uh, obese patient presenting with history of headache which is suggestive of raised ict and complaint of decreased vision which is progressive for the last 20 days and visual fields in this patient which showed peripheral constriction of vision with no typical visual field defects suggestive that this uh, lesion could be present interior to the optic chiasma and in fundus having bilateral papilledema. So what are the various differential diagnoses you should keep coming to the differential diagnosis in this patient who is an obese female with the past history of taking tretinoin and now presenting to you with headache and decreased vision. 
what first possibility we will always keep that is a space occupying lesion that is any space occupying lesion which can be a malignancy which can be hematoma tuberculoma or ncc so second possibility is you can always rule out structural lesion secondly bleed any bleed like sah because in this patient there was change in the character of the headache though it was not a thunderclap headache but the change of character was present but decrease vision will not cannot be explained on the basis of sh third possibility what we can give is intracranial infection though there was no history of any um altered sensorium or any neurological deficit and uh, there was no meningeal signs but still possibility of because patient has headache and along with it there is decreased vision you can you can have tuber uh, tuberculosis with the involvement of optic chiasm optochiasmatic tuberculosis which can present with the headache and then blurred vision okay the fourth differential diagnosis intracranial inflammatory disorders intracranial inflammatory disorders you have to rule out the granulomatous and non granulomatous uh, inflammatory disorder you need for the investigations for that with mri you also need that chest x ray esr and another systemic signs which can point out towards a granuloma or granulomatous disease important differential in any female is young female is cvt that is cortical venous thrombosis so and this is an important differential another important thing because this patient was an obesely female along with taking tretinoin the possibility of idiopathic idiopathic intracranial hypertension is very high another thing is that patient can be having pseudo papilledema but in that case uh, it will uh, because headache uh explain to explain the headache on the basis of pseudopapilledema is difficult now what are the various investigations you need now you need mri brain why to rule out these two causes sol sch intracranial intracranial infections for that you will do contrast plain with contrast if this is normal then you will also go for mrv to rule out cortical venous thrombosis okay then some signs of if uh, idiopathic intracranial hypertension can be seen on mri brain like toxicity of optic nerves the flattening of sclera and the um like a flat um empty cella sign so ih some clue about ih can we can get it on mri brain pseudo papilledema this uh, for this um you have to refer the patient to the ophthalmology to rule out the possibility of drusens okay now in this patient the mri brain there was uh, on there was no structural lesion mri brain showed the signs of ih like which i have told you and mrv was normal csf was done csf was uh, pressure was raised it was 36 uh 360 mm of water and the, there was no cells okay protein was normal and uh, sugar was normal so which ruled out the any inflammatory this was uh, this was a in non inflammatory csf okay this also favors our diagnosis of ih okay then Hello friends welcome to my channel neurology videos learn by seeing if you are tuning to this channel first time subscribe it to get the maximum neurology videos